Wonderland. Hey y'all, what's going on? This is Aaron Hilliard from Mushroom Wonderland. And if you're new to the channel, we talk all about wild mushrooms here. I'm a mycologist from the Pacific Northwest. My name is Aaron Hilliard. I'm the vice president of the local mycological society here in Kitsap County. I'm also the creator of Mushroom Wonderland here. You can see on TikTok and on Instagram, more reels and things like that. Today, me and my dog Gunner are out in the forest to give you a weekly update on what kind of mushrooms are growing around this area. So maybe you can get an idea of what's growing in your area because we're just, uh, just came into November. It's November 1st today. So yesterday was Halloween and this is typically the height of mushroom season. Although we kind of got gypped on our mushroom season this year. It is, uh, it was just like super hot and dry and now it's like getting really cold. So we might have a short window here we're gonna pack in a lot of mushroom uh, related information. I'll make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can get all the updates on this cool channel about wild mushrooms. You know they're interesting. Uh, let's head into the woods at the PNW, see what's growing here the first week of November, 2022. Much love everyone, come on, let's go. Check out this log laying over here. What we got is an old uh, red alder tree. You can see the stump of it there. Here's the logs laying down. And it's um, known as sterium hirsutum, or the false turkey tail. And what happens is uh, this grows on the hardwood, and then um, another mushroom comes along and parasitizes the sterium, and it grows this orange jelly fungus, Tremella mesenterica, or witch's butter. So. Always growing in association with the sterium is where you're going to find the tremola. And it likes growing on this hard wood. They cultivate this stuff in China. And uh, it's beautiful. And it's also edible. And some people really like it. So, tremella mesenterica, the witch's butter. Uh, if you like boogery mushrooms, this is the one for you. Um, feels just like boogers or something. All these gelatinous folds of orange gooeyness so there's also a conifer one that looks similar that's known as dacromyces chrysospermus that grows around here but if you find the one that's actually growing with the sterium in the same log it's parasitizing the sterium this one is the true witch's butter tremula mesenterica so there you go yum yum something right here check that out look at that guy beautiful cantharellus this one's got orangey hues on the cap but it's kind of really white underneath the white chanterelle known as cantharellus abobidus and uh and the and the golden chanterelle cantharellus formosus formosus meaning the beautiful chanterelle the beautiful cantharellus they grow here in the same forest together within feet of each other sometimes and are um, both really good edible mushrooms this one i don't know sometimes i wonder if they're a bit of a hybrid i think this one was more golden and then it got washed out by rain but very stout very chunky thick little guys resistant to insects so you don't have to worry about worms too much in your chanterelles if you're picking chanterelles and they're full of worms they're probably not chanterelles I just came across a super cool mushroom growing down here. Look at this guy. Does anybody recognize this? This is an interesting mushroom, and this is kind of a strange form of it. But this one is known as Hydnellum pecchii, or the bleeding tooth fungus. This one's really, really young. But Hydnellum is a genus of these tooth fungi that are really woody, kind of like bark. This one gets a red gutation or a red secretion that makes little driplets of what looks just like blood on the cap. Um, one of the most photogenic mushrooms in the world, in my opinion. This one's really young, like I said. And you can see the red. That's a pigmentation that's in the gutation 
it turns it red and you can see that um, and as it starts to exude driplets in the next few days uh, this is going to become a, ble a bleeding tooth fungus beautiful mushroom so not really edible but they're used for medicinal purposes uh, they're being studied anyways for anticoagulant properties and uh, and also um, treatments in antibacterial uh, medicine and stuff like that so anyways the Heidenellum peckii named after a guy named Charles Peck an old mycologist um, and this is just a young form hopefully we'll see some that are a little bit older but one of my favorite mushrooms to find definitely one of my favorites to photograph right over here on the side of the trail kind of popping up through the moss big ugly fella this thing's old Look at that. Big, ugly old Russula, Russula brevipes. So this one just riddled with bugs. Unlike the chanterelles, Russulas really get uh, eaten up by bugs. If you look right down here, these little white mushrooms, I would bet you that we have a Douglas fir cone. Look at that. Douglas fir cone, and they grow these little tiny white mushrooms. These are known as Strobilurus trulicatus, or the white fir cone mushroom, even though it's not a true fir tree. This is a Pseudosugo mensesii, or Pseudosuga. So it's a, it's a false hemlock. Um, but they uh, are signs of the first of the mushrooms that are emerging in early fall. They grow on pine cones like this. Sometimes you can find 20 of them on a cone. These ones are rather large, actually. Um, they're usually very, very small. Dang it, I can't. There we go. So a little bit of a yellow tinge to the stems. White spored things. Uh, beautiful little mushroom. So strobilurus. It's a fun one to say. The white fur cone mushroom. Soon after seeing these is when I start to really see chanterelles, uh, masutake, porcini. These are a sign that the rains have came. So it's happening. It's happening, my friends. Here's more proof for you. Look at that. Pacific golden chanterelles, cantharellus formosus. Oh, buttons everywhere popping up. Right on the side of the trail. I mean, right on the side of the trail. So somebody's gonna find a good little chanterelle feast here in a couple of days. So that's cool. And then I saw a little mushroom right back in here. What are you, buddy? Let's have a look at what this little guy is. Growing all alone. Oh man, long stipe on that. Look at that. It's got this little brownish cap, really kind of this gold color. And it's got these gills that sort of are decurrent. This is called Krugomphus. And so this mushroom is a parasite of a different type of mushroom mycelium, Suillus. So I didn't see any Suillus growing right there, but if I were to come back, you'd probably see some fruiting bodies of Suillus very soon. Growing right on the side of the trail. Look at this. What do we got here? Woo! Another chunky chanterelle. Come on the side of the trail. This one's old. It's been rained on hard. Almost looks like it's got some mold going on. But look at those uh, gills. They're all kind of wavy. That's a little bit uncharacteristic. You might confuse this one for the Turbinellus flocosus or the, or the, the scaly vase chanterelle. But this is a true chanterelle. So... Good to eat. Sometimes the morphological features are a little bit different, but they all fall within a range of normal. So I do see chanterelles that do have these wavy kind of gills like that. Um, and that's fine. They actually taste better. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know about that, but give it a try. This one with this like kind of patches of what looked like trichoderma or green mold growing on the top of the cap. Probably not going to want that. Honestly, there's enough mushrooms out right now you don't need to be eating moldy ones so but that's a chunky boy a chonky boy nice oh look at what we found here so we're in a mushroom wonderland right now 
Look at that. Oh, that is the cap of an Amanita. See that? It's a button. You can see that reddish color coming through. That's going to be a beautiful Amanita muscaria. Oh, right here next to the chanterelle is the Crogonfus. Hydnellum pecchii. All kinds of mushrooms. Oh, the Strobilurus trulicetus. We've got a lot of mushrooms growing on this little sides of this trail. So look close, you know. we got a lot of this Salal brush. This is called Salal. Brush pickers pick this for, uh, for floral decorations. They pick the prettier ones, you know, and these go in, in floral decorations, but they love to grow in the same kind of habitat that a lot of these mushrooms grow in here in the PNW. It's a coniferous forest. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Big chunky Amanita muscaria. See that yellowness? That's an indicator that it is the variety Flabby Volveda. And if it doesn't have that yellow color, then it's a uh, then it's likely the European version, which is the true Amanita muscaria, but this is a pretty example of one. Very nice. I love to find those, just to look at, you know, they are toxic. You can prepare them in a way to eat them. They can also be used as a psychotropic kind of deliriant sort of drug. And um, some people say they can just fry them up and eat them as they are. I wouldn't test that, you know, the verdict of the ages has been toxic, so. But a beautiful one to look at. The Mario mushroom, Amanita muscaria, variety Flabby Volveda. So we're walking along and I look down and actually see some mushrooms that are good for the eating. They're just starting to pop up. So if you got a sharp eye, you can see these guys down here in the oh these are smushed but look at right here there we go just barely peeking out of the moss there we go chanterelle some of the most popular edible mushrooms see that White chanterelles. I'm gonna pluck these out and then I'm gonna cut the stump. Kind of dirty guys, but and then I see a couple more popping up right here. A couple more, so so if you want one of these mesh bags or this cool gathering knife, I'll put those links in the description for you. Get them on Amazon. Pretty cheap. And you look like a pro and you spread spores in the forest. How oh, cool. More of these chanterelles, they just, they're all over the place. Kind of a strange morphology, they're really wet. So I guess these were really dry and then it poured rain a lot and everything got soaked and kind of turned them to mush. Right down there. Oh, more Hydnellum pecchii. Starting to pop up. They're very young. Oh, you can see the teeth on those ones. Beautiful. So they're just about to get that beautiful red gutation. Let's come out in the next couple of days and take pictures of these. But how cool. They do look like teeth. These ones really look like teeth. The way they're growing. Very cool. And right down here. Look at that. Beautiful. Looks like a little coral. That's what it's known as, coral fungi. So, this is a species in the genus Ramiria. So, fairly common around here in the fall. And they grow into these beautiful coral looking shapes. And some of them are edible. Some of them are said to give you some GI distress. I thought I saw more, a prettier little flush of them happening over here. Mm, don't see them now put it in the comments if you just if you saw them, but uh, yeah The uh, Ramiria fungi I just happen to leave those alone Because there's a lot of other good trustworthy edibles out here, but uh, pretty ones definitely look like a little little coral
this kind of environment it's a good place to get off the trail it's dark and it's mossy it's beautiful in here this is where i'd often find a lot of cool mushrooms like what's that growing right down here there we go little golden chanterelle just popping up out of the moss easy to see when the uh, when the brush isn't too thick you know so oh there we go see that beautiful little chanterelles these are really good ones for the dinner basket i like them that size so pretty pretty little chanterelles compared to those big huge ones that you were seeing a minute ago these ones are a little more petite they, they honestly they look more appetizing even so i like them that size so areas like this you know if you don't have rain gear on you're probably gonna get your pants wet but uh it's worth it when you find little forest flowers like these. In here in this darker little part of the forest, I noticed there's a lot of holes in the dirt like this. And what this probably is, is a form of a truffle that was growing down here. Another hole right there. Very obvious holes where things got dug up by animals out here. These are most probably the alaphomyces so the deer truffle not a not a really good uh truffle to eat for humans in fact you just don't want to eat them they're not poisonous but um, they're nasty and then they turn into a big puff of spores so but whenever you see all those little holes in the forest floor it's likely that animals were digging up forms of truffles and that's not to say that it could probably be a tuber species too growing here among the dug fur because the real good truffles the tubers they like to grow with douglas fur so cool <laughs> Hey, so thank you guys a lot for joining me again uh, this week. I'm going to try to just keep an update video going all throughout the mushroom season of what I'm finding growing here in my neck of the woods in the Kitsap Peninsula, uh, right in the Puget Sound Basin. So um, if you like these kind of videos, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a good comment. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Much love, everyone. Peace.